Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another video here at Red Dirt Reptiles. I think about right now, all of y'all know exactly who I am. I'm Corey Samples, right? Red Dirt Reptiles, let's just get right into it. So, <clears throat> we're gonna cover some enclosures. Uh, now listen, all breeders, all keepers, we're all gonna think a little differently, probably say a little differently when it involves enclosures. Uh, the most basic of enclosures is a little aquarium uh, usually something like so uh, or like so however even this is ginormous for a uh, <clears throat> a baby for a baby you can keep them in probably a 10 gallon tank if you were just doing one snake if you were housing multiple babies together you would definitely want at least a 20 gallon uh, <clears throat> now to be honest with you you could just buy a 20 gallon as a hatchling and keep that up until they're about three foot long this guy right here is just about ready to upgrade to a new enclosure himself huh you want the snake or the enclosure to be no half or no less than half the length of a, of your ball python okay so let's say if my ball python is four foot long the smallest cage i would want to put him in is something that is two foot long which is usually somewhere around a 20 gallon long. Usually get about 18 to 20 inches long by about eight to 10 inches wide by about a foot tall. Uh, somewhere in that region, anywhere between a foot to 16 inches tall. Uh, and that's great for a single ball python. Uh, again, up until about three foot long. So relatively, probably the first year, year and a half if your ball python is growing correctly. Uh, after that, you need to be going to at minimum a 40 gallon breeder size ball, uh, enclosure. So <clears throat> I say breeder because it's more wide than it is long and I've noticed these guys, even though they curl up a lot, they do like floor space uh, and then it gives you a lot more uh, ability to plant shrubbery and foliage, foliage and such like that so that they can, you know, get enrichment. It helps with their shed a lot, having things inside their enclosures. Uh, however, look, check this out. He, this guy right here, he's due for an upgrade himself just about. He is going to go to a 40 gallon front facing exoterra enclosure as such. Once he gets to full size, I will probably upgrade him to, what is it? The 60 gallon front facing enclosure from exoterra. It's a large low is what it is. Uh, a large low, large medium. That would be perfect for one of these guys for life. All right, ball pythons again, just like I covered in my last video. They do not get a ton uh, of length. They're more fat than they are length, uh, or more girthy than they are lengthy. So you're not gonna need something huge. And indignant to ball python, which if you haven't noticed, he's even kind of balled up around me. They get their names from, you got it folks, being balled up all the time. Uh, nine times out of 10, once they go to sleep or go to rest, you're gonna find them balled up somewhere. Uh, out and about when they're being active, you'll find them just like this, just hanging out, being chill, you know. But again, as you can see, after a couple moments of just chilling, he's gonna go right back to being balled up. That's just where he prefers. For most ball pythons prefer, if they aren't being active and on the move, they're usually balled up in a corner somewhere. If you find your snake laying in its water, your snake is telling you and itself and the world it is fitting to go through a shed. So be paying attention because that does indeed happen. Again, this guy was pulled out before all these videos uh, just specifically out of his water. So uh, <laughs> makes it great. Uh, <clears throat> again, hatchlings can be housed together. I honestly would not house in a racking system or even in a smaller enclosure, probably no more than uh, 10 to 12 hatchlings at a time, but by the time they're three to six months old, they need to be separated out uh, You just you know, you don't want to take the chance on anything bad really happening You just got to absolutely love just how beautiful these guys are uh, I do even his little glazed eyeballs right at the moment just due to the fact that he's fits in the go to shed You can see just how glazed they are. You can see a little bit of dryness on his top of his head Nothing too bad, but that's just letting me know it's about to go down uh, so Temps, let's, let's go over husbandry, okay? Uh, as, as far as bedding goes, I will leave that up to the creator. I mean, you could keep them on tile. You could keep them on newspaper. You could keep them on paper towels. You could keep them on cypress mulch. You can keep them on topsoil. 
You can keep them on Cocoa Peat. You can keep them on Eco Earth. You can keep them on a, on a Reptomat. You can keep them on pretty much anything as long as they can absorb heat. Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you. We do a Cypress Mulch Top Soil Mix with our guys. They just seem to love it. Kind of gives it more of an at-home feeling for them uh, <clears throat> with a lot of water. Obviously, we offer a, a large body of water so that they can uh, breathe. Or not breathe, sorry, so that they can soak. Uh, these guys need to have the ability to thermoregulate. So having uh, a spot for them to soak is almost a must. Um, these guys do not need UVB light, but absolutely it doesn't hurt. And it brightens the shit out of their, or excuse me, brightens the crap out of their tanks. So it doesn't really hurt. Uh, if you're going to put something in there for them, put something in there that is, don't just go get a smooth rock and put them in there, okay? These guys can benefit from branches, like jagged rocks and stuff like that, even though you think, oh, it may cut them. No, 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 it helps. It helps. They are able to rub across this. It helps greatly with their uh, with their shedding and uh, improves muscle tone and empowers them for enrichment. It's very nice. Huh, very nice. Uh, <clears throat> let's say that... Uh, that uh, you just have an all-around happy snake going on or about like that. Now, let's, let's say this. You can use, uh, for enclosures, most ball pythons. Uh, if you notice mine, uh, you can only see in the front of them. Like, we'll use this one specifically for uh, an example. It's painted all the way around. That is painted on the outside, not on the inside. So it reflects on the inside what I painted on the outside. Uh, these guys are... Well, I'll pick that up later. These guys aren't are uh, I'm gonna say not too prone to needing uh, quiet space like my monitors and such are where I give them just one viewpoint uh, snakes though if you want to keep them from spooking especially as young guys that's the way to go uh, you can use backgrounds you can paint you know what I mean obviously we like to paint but at the same time we have backgrounds so oh <laughs> sorry that was me tried to look cool in that video it didn't work out because i threw it on top of my my little tortoise baby <laughs> anyway look uh as far as as uh, <laughs> as far as ball pythons go these things are the bee's knees for ball python or for pythons these things are great uh as far as snakes go they're probably the number one rated pet snake across the globe hands down and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm about 100% positive there have been more morphs created out of ball pythons than there have any other species of snakes. So, uh, and I'm talking man-made morphs, and that's just incredible. Um, again, I, I appreciate y'all sticking in. And uh, on this next video, we'll hope to not have so many screw-ups. Sorry, Ivy. Y'all say bye to Ice Cube. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see y'all in the next video. See y'all later.